Hey YouTube, Kira Qualia here, bringing you all an update to my Cardfight Vanguard Flagberg deck profile for post-Dragon Tree Invasion. We got some new support in set 9 for the Flagberg deck. I really do feel like we get support for Flagberg in every main Cardfight Vanguard booster set. Aside from the glitter ones, it never really seems to be overlooked. We always get at least one or two cards in every set for Flagberg. We got some good grade 3 consistency cards in this set and just overall power cards as well. Come Combined with some of the other newer cards we received from cards like set 8, I wanted to update the deck just with all of the changes with this main Vanguard heavy hitter deck. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the ride deck, our starter is still Officer Cadet Cherokees when rode upon. If you went second, draw a card. Our grade 1 is in road shooter. When rode upon, by Ascendance Assault and call this card to rear guard. And also, if your Vanguard's flagship dragon, Flagberg Dragon, or Ascendance Salt, it gets intercept and power plus 2000. So, just as an easy rear guard to call and with additional power and plus two intercept, also. We also run the Ascendance Assault. You may reveal a flagship dragon, Flagberg dragon, or in road shooter from your hand for this cost. When it's thrown upon, Soul Blast one card other than this card, call it to rear guard. And on rear guard, once per turn, when your other rear guard attacks a Vanguard, if your Vanguard is flagship dragon, Flagberg dragon, count plus one and stand this unit. So, just another option to have a restander in the deck with. With this card for the play setup with our main go-to grade 3 vanguard being flagship dragon flagberg dragon along with the copy of this card that we're running in the ride deck we're also running three additional cards in the main deck so you can have the card if need be to reveal off of your ascendant assault to be able to Call this card without needing the Soul Blast. But also with this card, when it attacks a Vanguard, count plus one and perform all the following according to the number of attacks you made this turn. If it was three or more, you draw a card. Four or more, your opponent chooses two rear guards and retires them. Or with the new updated text, you choose the two and retire them. So remember that, depending on what version of Flagberg Dragon you have. And five or more attacks until the end of that battle. This unit gets plus 10,000. And when your opponent would call cards from their hand of the guard circle, they must call three or more at the same time. So this is the heavy numbers that I was talking about before. If you Persona Road on top of this, it's 33,000 attack points alone that Flagberg hits for. And also just being able to have that pressure against your opponent for you to use. For the additional grade threes, we do run a good number of them as added backup. Four copies of Blue Artillery Dragon Inlet Pulse Dragon. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a grade three or greater Vanguard if it was the first battle of this turn. And your Vanguard is Flagship Dragon, Flagberg Dragon, Soul Blast One, and stand this unit. And also at the end of the battle, if the number at the end of your turn, if the total number of cards this turn that attacked is four more, put it into the soul and draw a card. So it can build up your soul power for some of your other soul blasting card abilities. And also just being able to utilize the restand power and the soul blast of itself as well to restand this card. The last of the grade threes that I run in the deck is three copies of Imperian Blue Dragon, Shelling Cannon Dragon from the back row center rear guard at the beginning of your battle phase. If your vanguard is flagship dragon, Flagberg Dragon, and your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater, counter plus one until the end of this turn. This unit can attack from the back row and it gets plus 10,000 power. And from the back row center rear guard, if you would move or swap this unit during your main phase, you can move it within the same row. Being able to move this card around like that and just have an additional unit that can attack with the back row gives you that additional number that you may need to be able to power up your Flagberg Dragon on the field. Moving on now to the Grade 2s, I also run four copies of Tier Knight Eryx. At the end of the battle, this unit attacked a Vanguard if it is the second battle this turn, and you have a stood Vanguard with Flagberg and its card name. Soul Blast 1, stand this unit, and it gets plus 5,000 to end of turn. So just if you have to attack with this unit by itself, or just with the booster, being able to restand it and have it get plus 5,000 power means that you can at least potentially hit another one of your opponent's cards, with this card being the potential fourth or fifth attack you may need against your opponent with that play, just needing a Soul Blast 1, preserving your Counter Blasts for some of the other cards that we run uh, for the deck as well, including our Shelling Cannon Dragon and also Flagberg itself. With the last of the grade twos, I'm testing out one copy of the new Tideline Dragon on rearguard once per turn. If you Persona Road this turn, Soul Blast 1, choose one of your other units, and it gets plus 10,000 to end of turn. So you can even potentially give that plus 10,000 power to Flagberg, but it's more just a setup card since it is a once per turn. I'm testing it out with some of the other numbers. You could move around some of the other numbers of Eric's, putting in a second copy of Tideline Dragon for a dropping of Tier Knight Eric's down to three for this card. 
Moving on now to the grade ones. I'm running four copies of the new Tier Knight Ariante. Once per turn on rearguard, if you have a Vanguard flag burning against card name, counter plus one, discard a card from your hand, choose a grade three or less card from your drop zone, call it to rear, and it gets plus 5,000 till end of turn. So this can either set up your inlet pulse or your uh, shelling cannon dragon on the rear guard because you can soul blast or you know retire these cards for other important cards and use tier knight arianthe for you to reset them back up on the field for your main go-to plays this card also takes up one of your counter blasts needed for that play for you to utilize but it's a great four of because it just is a once per turn on the rear guard so it can even just provide boosters to other cards on the field while setting up your main go-to grade threes for you to get off the five needed attacks for flagberg during that turn and I also run four copies of Prized Trident. You do counterblast quite a bit in this deck, so you can rely on Prized Trident when all your other unit attacks. If it's the fifth battle this turn or more, putting this card into the soul to counter charge one, making up for some of your soul blasting power, and also being able to have this card just give you that counter charge that you would desperately need in this deck for you to use. If you have your counterblast saved for some of your other cards in the deck, you can save the counterblasts for your Vanguard with the two copies of Rousing Breath Dragon that we run as well. Uh, from the back row center rear guard during the fifth or more battle of this turn, the cost of all the original auto abilities your Vanguard with Flagberg and its card name is reduced by a counterblast of one. So Rousing Breath Dragon does have to be in the back row center to make use of this card, but you can at least move Shelling Cannon out of the way if you know you're going to have the fifth attacks and don't need this card to place this card in another rear guard and then call out your Rousing Breath Dragon with that play. With the last of our grade ones being the Sentinel lineup, so three copies of Custodial Dragon and one copy of Elementaria Sanctitude for the triple drive option against units that will have triple drive and being able to have to not pay the discard costs and also just getting around some of the other restrictions that some of your Sentinels may have also being a blitz order for that play. The only other order I run in the deck is the one copy of Gradius Cradell for the additional Persona Ride options for our Vanguard, giving us the draw power as well, if need be, for more and more power to our front row as well. And for the trigger lineup, since we have such a guard restriction with Flagberg, I'm running the seven critical, so four copies of Dual Pressure Dragon and three copies of Abyss Temptation. If you have the critical with the put into soul power, you can always run that instead of the Dual Pressure Dragon or the Abyss Temptation. And our next lineup is the Serene Maiden Lena, since front triggers really don't do much in this deck, since our Vanguard is always the last thing to attack usually in the deck. So just four copies of this card for hand consistency and additional shield power. And for our heals, I run the two copies of Petronella, the one copy of Hedgehog, and the one Fairy Asher. If you have the new heal from the new set, you can always replace one of the Hedgehog or the Asher for that card, depending on if you go up against decks like the Grade 4 lineup, or the Dragon Tree Griffogilla, with our over trigger being Blessed Favor for the additional heal power and power to the front row and 100 million critical power also. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, I always like to keep Flagberg up to date with all the support we get from the main booster sets. And I feel like we may even get some more in set 10 with the pattern that this deck likes to uphold. And as always, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Qualia out.